free. Try and make it a bit lighter. <laughs> Not that heavy. <laughs> We're big on safety in this shed. The auto unplug? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> I cut through the cord. <laughs> happens. It happens to the best of us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. 
Why? <laughs> well, it's a hole. It's a bit crooked in the middle there, but I think that'll. How do you know, How do you know it's crooked? Uh, I can see just a bit of a like a side bit, so I'm skewed a tiny bit, but. Oh yeah. It's pretty good effort, really. Nice. And then you're going to go bigger and bigger. Yeah. So. Explain it. So what I'm going to do with my variety of things, we've counterboard with a six mil drill bit either end so that meets. Then I'm going to run a hole saw through as far as it'll go till it bottoms out. Then I'm going to plough it out with a 38 mil spade bit because that's the biggest one I could find. Then when it gets too far, I'm going to put the spade bit on the extension and keep going. I don't know if this is going to work. Wow. <laughs> how, does it, how is it usually done? Machined with like a... Uh, we could get the boring bar. I could drill a really big hole and get the boring bar and mount that. But I just want this to be exactly 51 mil and the boring bar sometimes wobbles a bit and takes out more. Ah, oh, because it's on a long pole as well, so... Yeah. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get copper tube and run a copper tube in here. Mm -hmm and then the shaft will go through that copper tube and you won't see it. I thought it was going to go through the skinite. That's through the hole. Here it sits loosely and it pops out and then when it pops out it goes into a keyway on this bottom one that's mounted to there and then this one on the hull. Oh, okay. So this is freely moving and that's mounted to the shaft. So yep. when you turn the shaft, that turns, and then the shaft is in this hole. And that gets connected to the shaft. The rudder, no, because we need to be able to remove the shaft to get the rudder off. Rudders are complicated now. If it was transom hung, you'd just put a heap of gudgeons. Transom hung, just heap of pintles and gudgeons, and then off you go and you drop it in. But this is not that easy. So that's Matt's crazy plan for the day. I like it. With a variety of stuff. Sort of works, but I don't know how I'm going to get rid of this core. When I'm halfway down the pot, need a bigger spade bit. Um, bigger spade bit. Do you have any bright ideas how to get rid of this in the eye? I could use a smaller hole. Here we go. Change to a smaller hole saw. Get that last bit out. I see what you mean. You can't go further with your hole. No, I almost have to do like hole saw, hole saw, and then spade bit. I guess. It's so now you can go a bit further with I see. Yeah, it's gonna take a while.
So the rudder's coming along. Um, I've glued a copper tube in the top end. I'm preparing for bolts. I think I'm gonna go for four bolts, copper bolts with bronze nuts along it. Drilling the holes for that is a little bit challenging. I think I'm gonna go from each end in and sort of meet in the middle and hope I uh, line up okay. I'm trying to avoid the bronze strapping um, in various areas. So hopefully just drilling through and finding the hole and then bash them in and then it's strong. That's the plan. I've rounded the forward edge. The aft edge is flat. I've heard somewhere that that creates turbulence if you round the aft edge of the rudder off. Um, so for now we're just going to leave it and uh, talk to some more people. <laughs> yourselves for a walk. No, we're working. <clears throat> Massively worried. It's just a bit odd that this would go in more, but it would have to go in more than that. But that's okay. I'm going to screw that on. Okay, screw it on.
Let me just get, let this rudder sit here at lunch. Stare at it for a bit. Are you ready for a walk on it? It's a zoo in here. You guys, what are you doing here? What are they doing here, Obi? So the rudder is sort of complete. <clears throat> We're now looking at the stern post face and making um, castings. So a lot of pattern making for all the gudgeon and pin tools on the rudder. We've notched out and dry fitted quite a lot of them to make sure they work before they go cast and then come back and they're the wrong size and we'd be in trouble. It's quite labour intensive making patterns for castings. The bronze, um, the lifter has been working hard. In the meantime, for our bearing for the shaft through the stern post in the boat, we have done a lot of research and settled for Beskanite High Loop. It's an awesome product and it's well suited for marine applications. They use it quite regularly, even on cutlass bearings. This stuff is naturally very slippery when you have your finger in here um, and it's gonna create a watertight seal and keep that rudder stock from pivoting. And then this goes in here, to there somewhere, and the rudder stock will come out of that and pivot. We're going to make a couple of flanges, top and bottom, or maybe just top, to hold it in place. So this will help align the rudder stock and the whole rudder down. So when we're setting it up, we'll drop the shaft in, that'll go into the big bronze casting for the rudder we've made, um, and keep it all in place. Beskanite High Lube has fantastic uh, wear properties and low friction coefficient, so it's ideal for bearings such as these in the marine application. It's um, easy, really easy to machine. That's a big selling point. So it's not as labor intensive as machining bronze or something. Um, it's very simple. It doesn't swell or move in the water. The guys there at Beskanite High Lube were fantastic to deal with. Um, they really helped us and gave us some great options on what we can use. We've got some flat sheet and two tubings. This one tubing will go through the stern post. And then we've got another section of tube that'll go through the deck and the deck beam there. And that'll help all the load that's on the tiller. This will keep it all in place. Uh, Beskanite High Lube is also fantastic because it's plastic. So you don't have to worry about electrolysis and all the crazy stuff going on under the waterline. Um, in this application it's actually above the waterline but you could use it below and then not have to worry about what dissimilar metals you're getting involved below the waterline. So it's a great option for us and we're super happy with it. He wants sawdust. It's so awesome. And all the sand everywhere. Yeah, it's plenty of sand. There's no shortage of sand, is it? There's no shortage.
<laughs> they look amazing. Very happy with them. They're not boring at the moment, we'll be this afternoon. Oh, I should have come this afternoon. Look at the patterns. What are you pouring this afternoon? Bronze gypsies. Ooh, anyway. from you, that's exciting. I'll do, I don't know what, what did we do for Matt last time?